blowing in my face. I, oh, oh, you're here. Sorry. We stayed up too late at the campfire. I gotta get up. Whew. Oh, I'm sorry, boys and girls. I guess I won't be mad at you for blowing in my face. Whew. <sighs> Hi, welcome to Camp Read A Lot. I'm Mrs. Hammock and I am excited that you're here at camp with me today. Sorry about that. Camp is such a fun time for learning. And at Camp Read A Lot, we're going to spend our days reading, talking, singing, and learning, and enjoying all kinds of activities together to help us become strong readers. Parents, you can help at home too. Did you know that you can play rhyming games? That's a fun way to help practice sound awareness or phonemic awareness for your kids. You can read uh, rhyming books that have rhyming words, you can sing rhyming songs, and you can play rhyming riddle games. I hope you're practicing at home because that would be awesome. All right, thank you, buddy, for waking me up. I wouldn't have wanted to miss today. Let's get ready for our Camp Read A Lot pledge. Are you ready? Okay, here we go. Oh, oh, good for you, he's got his hand up. Here we go. On my honor, I will try my best to be kind to everyone, to have a smile on my face and a song in my heart. Great, oh, very nice, good job. All right, well, are you ready to play our sound game today? We need to train our ears for sound. Today, I have a great game. It's called segmenting syllables. That means taking apart words and telling how many parts there are. Do you think you can do that? Yes, oh, I knew it. Okay, I'm gonna tell you a word and then we're gonna clap it and see how many syllables there are. Now remember, a syllable is a part of a word that has a vowel sound in it. And all words have to have at least one vowel sound, okay? All right, so here we go. Our first word is summer, summer. You ready to clap it? Okay, let's go. Some mer. How many did you clap? Two. Great job. Okay, the next one is pencil. Pencil. You ready to clap? Pen sil. Two. Very nice. Let's try the last one. Are you ready? Triangle. Mm, that's a long one. Here we go. Try ang. Go. Great. That's three syllables. Fantastic. All right. I know how much you love s'mores and cookies and sweets and candies. Yes, I know. You are a little junk food junkie. All right. But I have a joke for you. Are you ready? Okay. What, what kind of keys are sweet? What kind of keys are sweet? Do you know at home? Shout it out if you do. What kind of keys are sweet? Cookies. <laughs> oh, even, even after I oversleep, I'm just so funny. No, that wasn't a funny one. And no, no, I do not have cookies for you. I was just a joke. I know. Let's get to our catch of the day, okay? Are you ready to hear? Okay, all right, let's, let's get you in your spot. You ready? All right, jump down there. Good job. All right, today we have some very interesting catch of the day words. So let's take a look at them. This one says gnaw, gnaw. Do you know what that word means? Gnaw is to bite or nibble on something for a long time. What? <laughs> Scooter says he knows what that means. To bite or nibble on something for a long time. How about this one? This one says venom, venom. Do you know what that is? Yes, you're right, snakes have venom. Poison that an animal gives off is called venom. Mm. Oh, this is an interesting word. Do you see that word? Ch 
Oh, look at that die graph. Ch chisel, chisel. A long metal tool that's used to cut wood. Chisel. All right, let's see what else. Oh, I have one last one. Oh, we can sound this one out. Tusk. Tusk. Do you know what a tusk is? It's a long pointed tooth. Now, we have some important words here and we're going to listen to a story and I want you to listen for those words because I think you're going to see that there's some exciting things in this story about animals. Are you ready? Remember, we're talking about curiosity and what we're curious about. That means being eager or wanting to know something is when we're curious. And it's important to be curious because we want you to be lifelong learners. For your whole long life, we want you to keep learning because that's how we make our brains strong and grow. All right, I am still learning things every day and I hope you are too. This story is called, What if you had animal teeth? What if you had animal teeth? Wow, take a look at this guy. Can you imagine what you'd look like with animal teeth? This story is written by Sandra Markle and illustrated by Howard McWilliam. Let's take a look. Here's our front cover. Do you see how his fangs are like this snake's fangs? Ooh. And here's our back cover. It tells us a little bit about the story. I want you to be thinking about which animal you would like to trade teeth with. And let's see what this story is about. So you've lost your front teeth. Before you know it, two new ones will push right into their space. But what if an animal's teeth grew in instead? Oh, look at that. It says beaver. A beaver's front teeth are shaped like chisels and are very sharp. They're perfect for biting off bark and cutting down trees. Fact, a beaver's front teeth have a coating that contains iron. That makes them super strong and orange. Can you imagine having orange teeth? Ooh. If you had beaver teeth, your front teeth would never stop growing. So you could gnaw all the tough stuff you like day after day for all of your life. That would be incredible. Hey, I noticed something. Did you notice too? I see illustrations but I also see photographs. I'm curious, is this a fiction or nonfiction story? What do you think? Let's keep reading and see if we can find out. Ah! Oh, that just gave me a fright. Great white shark. A great white shark's front teeth are like all its others two inches long with an edge like a steak knife. They're great for biting through super thick things like elephant seal skin. Ugh. Fact, great white sharks get new teeth about every 100 days. That keeps their bite at its sharpest. Do you see this little fact here? This is just a little fact circle. Why do you think the author included that there? Right, so it, we can learn more about the animal that it's talking about. Did you decide, is it a fiction or nonfiction? Right. Well, you're right. It is, a, it is a nonfiction story because it's telling us facts about animals. But it's telling us in a fun way. If you had great white shark teeth, you'd never have to worry about losing a tooth. There'd always be a new tooth growing in behind it to slide into place and there'd never be a gap in your bite. Look what she looks like, wow. Narwhal, a narwhal's front teeth do something quite strange. The right one stays small, but the left one grows longer and longer and longer to nearly 10 feet. 
Once it's that big, it has a new name. Instead of a tooth, it's called a tusk. Fact, a narwhal's long front tooth grows right through its upper lip. Oh, that means it comes right out of the lip. How crazy is that? I like to call them the unicorn of the sea. Don't they look like a unicorn, right? What would you see or what would you use your tusk for if you were a narwhal? Would you poke around to find fish or fight off enemies? Or would you feel your way through the dark parts of the ocean? Even scientists are curious about what the narwhal does with its tusk. Did you hear that? Scientists, those are the smart, smart, smarty pants people that know all about animals that are studying animals and they don't even know some things. They're still curious and finding out. See how it is to be a lifelong learner? Pretty cool. Elephant, an elephant's front teeth are called tusks too. A male's tusks grow between five and seven inches long each year of its life. The world record elephant tusk has mo uh, was more than 11 feet long. They're great for digging water holes and pulling up tree roots to munch on. Fact, elephants are right tusked or left tusked, meaning they use one tusk more than another. Just like we use our hands. Some of us are right-handed and some of us are left-handed. How cool is that? I bet you didn't know you were kind of like an elephant. If you had elephant tusks as your front teeth, they would be super strong too. You could easily lift or move your bed or even the family car. No one would bully you, not even tigers. Wow, that's incredible. Rattlesnake. A rattlesnake's front teeth are called fangs. They're shaped like hooks and the tips are like needles and they fold like a pocket knife when the snake closes its mouth and snap forward when it opens wide. Fact, when folded back, a rattlesnake's fangs slide inside a fleshy cover. That way the needle tips don't nick the inside of the snake's mouth. Oh, so that's cool. So like when they tuck their teeth in, they put them in kind of like a pocket in their mouth. Isn't that cool? If you had rattlesnake fangs, your front teeth would inject deadly venom. So your teeth would be all you'd need to fight enemies or catch food. Oh, they don't look like they want any part of that, do they? Wow. A naked, what? Naked mole rat, what? Have you ever heard of such a thing? A naked mole rat's front teeth are shaped like shovels and are in front of its lips. They're perfect for digging the family's tunnels without getting a mouthful of dirt. Fact, like beavers, a naked mole rat's, te rat's teeth, front teeth never stop growing. Biting hard roots and bulbs wears the teeth down so that they don't get too long. If you had naked mole rat teeth, you could move each tooth separately to the left and to the right. They'd work just like chopsticks for picking up food, bite after bite. I have never heard of one of those before. Vampire bat, oh, I really love these guys. A vampire bat's front teeth are triangle shaped and sharp as razors. They're perfect for scooping out a bit of an animal's skin so they can lap up the blood that flows into the wound. Ooh, that's so creepy. Fact, baby vampire bats have teeth. But for the first four months, they aren't strong enough to fly or hunt. So they nurse and they eat vampire bat baby food, which is blood their mothers bring from their stomachs. Oh, that's so gross. If you had a vampire bat front teeth, you wouldn't have to worry about ever, uh, I'm sorry, you wouldn't have to worry about them chipping since their lack of hard enamel, since they lack a hard enamel coat, the edges would wear away easily and always stay sharp. Hippopotamus. 
a hippopotamus's front teeth are long, strong pegs with very sharp edges. They're powerful weapons, so opening wide to show them off helps hippos scare away their enemies and the males to win a mate. Can you imagine trying to find a wife by showing her your teeth? That seems crazy. Fact! Because a hippo's teeth don't yellow over time, in the past they were made into dentures. So people used to eat with hippo teeth. What? U.S. President George Washington had hippo teeth. What in the world? If you had hippopotamus front teeth, you'd never need to brush. Your upper teeth would grind against your lower ones, keeping them clean and white. Don't try that at home because you do not have hippo teeth. So you need to brush your teeth. Three times a day is the best. Bengal tiger. A Bengal tiger's front teeth are biting a biting six pack. Four sharp pegs edged by twin pointed cones set between its giant dagger-like canines. They're perfect for scraping feathers off of birds and meat off of bones. Fact, a mother tiger uses her front teeth to bite very gently as she picks up her cubs to move them. If you had Bengal tiger front teeth, they'd be strongly anchored into your jaw. You could bite and hold tight while dragging something as heavy as five times your weight. Wow. Crocodile. A crocodile's front teeth are all shaped like cones and have sharp tips. They bite very well but come out easily and new ones grow very slowly. So a crocodile's front teeth are always changing and are always different sizes. Fact, crocodiles can't clean their own teeth. Oh, I love this fact. So they open up their mouths for a small bird called a plover plover and plovers get in the crocodile's mouth and they pick the leftover food off of their teeth. Ew! But isn't it cool how they work together? If you had crocodile front teeth, your teeth would stick out when you closed your mouth and you wouldn't need to open wide when you went to the dentist or gave a toothy grin. All right, you ready? The camel! A young camel's front teeth are long, strong, and have very sharp edges. They're just right for nipping off tough, thorny desert plants. Fact. Baby camel's front teeth erupt through their gums by the time they're 14 days old. Like you, camels have two sets of teeth. Camels get their adult front teeth when they're about five years old. Hey, that is kind of like you. And if you had camel front teeth and ate through tough stuff eight hours a day, as camels do, by the time you were a grown-up, your front teeth would be no more than stubs. Animal teeth could be cool for a while, but you don't use your front teeth to cut down trees or scare off enemies. You don't need them to dig tunnels or bite off really tough stuff. And you never lift the family car with your teeth, even for fun. So what kind of front teeth are right for you? Luckily, you don't have to choose. The teeth that replace those that you lose will be people teeth. They'll be what you need to bite apples and carrots and corn on the cob, just what you need to help you talk and best of all, to show off your great big smile. Wow. Where do teeth come from? Adult teeth start growing inside your jaw soon after you're born, even while your baby teeth are getting ready to push through your gums. Any new growing teeth are called tooth buds. The crown or top of the tooth forms first and then the roots grow and push the tooth up. When this happens, an adult tooth, it makes the baby tooth's roots break down. That's why our teeth get wiggly when we're getting ready to lose our baby teeth. Next, the baby tooth gets loose and falls out. Then the permanent adult tooth moves into its spot. How, aren't teeth amazing, right? I hope you're taking care of your teeth because 
they help us to do all kinds of things, including talk. All right, what did you think? Are there any animal teeth that you are curious about? Did you think of some fun things that you might like to try out? If you could pick teeth, did you figure out which animal's teeth you would choose? All right, we're gonna talk about that in a few minutes, but let's take a look at our reading power chart. It says, what if you had animal teeth? That's the name of our book. Here's our animal, the beaver. What makes the beaver's teeth, their teeth, unique? Unique means special. So what makes the beaver's teeth special? Do you remember what it said in our story? Right, their teeth are sharp enough to bite bark, that's the outside covering of a tree, and to, to um, cut down trees. They cut down trees with their teeth. That is incredible. All right, so we're gonna say they are sharp enough to cut down trees. Wow, don't try that at home. What would happen if they had people teeth? What would happen if a beaver had people teeth? Right, they wouldn't be able to cut down trees, wouldn't they? Would they? That would be a problem. Let's look at the great white shark. All right, what makes their teeth unique? Now, sharks do have pretty incredible teeth. Do you know? That's it. You were listening so careful. They get new teeth all the time. And they're super sharp. So that means we have two sets of teeth, our baby teeth, and then we lose those and we get our adult or grown-up teeth. That's it. And if you don't take care of your grown-up teeth, then you don't have any teeth. And that's why George Washington had to use hippo teeth. But sharks never run out of teeth. They just continue to grow them their whole long lives. Isn't that incredible? I know. All right, I have to talk about the narwhal, just really fast. Can you remember what is special about the narwhal's teeth? Right, it grows, do you remember where it grows? Through its lip. And it can be 10 feet long. When it gets long like that, we call that a tusk. How cool is that? Wow, that is amazing. Well, I have a fun activity I think we're gonna try. Are you ready? Okay, let's go over to our activity table because we're gonna try on some animal teeth. You ready to try it? All right, come on. You come join me. All right, so our story was, what if you had animal teeth? So here I am, I know. I know, I, I, well, I had to open my mouth so you could see my teeth. Now, what if I had vampire bat teeth? Look at this. This is what I would look like. What? That is crazy. Okay, let's see. Let's try another one. All right, what if I had, ooh, let's try elephant teeth. How do I look now? <laughs> That's fun, huh? All right, uh, ooh. I know, let's try hippo teeth. Let's see what that looks like. Wow, I don't even look like myself. What do you think? What should we try next, Scooter? Oh, the narwhal? Oh, I love that, I could be a unicorn of the sea. Okay, let's try it. <laughs> Isn't that silly? This is something you could try at home. Oh, let's do the naked mole rat. Let's see what that looks like. Wow, I look so different. Ooh, should we try shark teeth? Ooh, that would be good. Shark teeth, how about that? What do you think? Which one do you like the best? Ooh, should I try the crocodile? Okay, let's do that. Wow! Well, I, 
there's so many great ones, I'm not sure what I'll choose. But it's time for us to sing. Are you ready? Skinnamarink a dink a dink, skinnamarink a doo. I love you. I love you in the morning and in the afternoon. I love you in the evening and underneath the moon. Skinnamarink a dink a dink, skinnamarink a doo. I love you and you and you and you. Bye-bye.